Today I'm going to be talking about biofilms and how they affect gut function, autoimmunity, inflammation. But mainly I want to talk about what are biofilms, how are they formed, what, why are they a problem, um, how do I know if I have biofilms, how do I test for those biofilms, and then of course how do I disrupt them. The main thing I want you to know about biofilms is they are very difficult to eradicate and they are frequently the cause of many chronic medical illnesses because they ultimately cause inflammation. The, the, the biofilms are resistant bacteria that don't want to go anywhere and they can be bad bacteria and these bad bacteria can be chronically inflammatory to your immune system and once your immune system is chronically inflamed bad things start to happen and you can pretty much insert any blank into that bad things. So it could be allergies, it could be autoimmunity, it could be um, heart attack, stroke, anything that causes chronic inflammation increases your risk of dying from any disease. So we're going to be talking about biofilms and, and what they are. So you probably already know about biofilms and don't realize you do. So dentists call plaque on your teeth plaque or tartar and that plaque is basically a biofilm. It is bacteria and fungus that get together and they form a very resistant structure called a biofilm. And this biofilm is so difficult to eradicate that a dentist has to go in there with a, a metal pick and clean that stuff out. Now, you can floss, you can brush your teeth every day, but you're still supposed to go to the dentist every six months, three months, whatever it may be, to get your teeth cleaned. And the reason why is because those biofilms are so tough that they can be resistant to a toothbrush, toothpaste, and floss. And then if it's not eradicated, it causes chronic inflammation of your gums and ultimately cavities and dental disease as we know it. So biofilms are difficult. Today, I will mainly be talking about biofilms in the gut, in your intestines, not so much on the teeth, although it's the same phenomenon and the two are related. So if you have a lot of dental issues, chances are you also have gut issues, whether you know it or not. So what is a biofilm? First of all, we already answered that. That's bacteria and fungus getting together, forming kind of a fortress, a protective barrier, so that they can survive and hide from insulting um, things like antibiotics and natural herbs and remedies to try to kill bacteria and fungus. So if they can hide from that, then all they have to do is wait out the weather, and as soon as that stuff is gone, then they can come out and play and eat your food again. So um, how are they formed? Biofilms are formed by um, poor eating, inflammatory foods, um, bad bacterial, um, inoculations. So how do we get these bad bacteria? There's bad bacteria, fungus all over our environment. We eat them, they're on our food, they're in the air, we spread them from person to person. So all you have to be is exposed to these bacteria and fungus, but you have to have the right environment for them to actually set up shop. So if you're eating poor food, lots of sugar, um, molds, anything like that, then you set up the environment for biofilms and ultimately you get more problems. It's not too different from the dental plaque. If you eat too much sugar and you eat bad foods, you get more dental plaque. It's the same thing. It's just a biofilm of the mouth instead of a biofilm of the intestines. So why are bio biofilms a problem? I've already kind of mentioned that. Number one, they harbor bad bacteria and bad fungi. We don't fully understand everything about biofilms. We have a long ways to go in our medical understanding of biofilms, but we do know that they harbor these bad bacteria, and certain bad bacteria actually create biofilms more than other ones, and we're still learning about that a little bit more. We know that clostridia bacteria frequently form biofilms, so anytime you have clostridia overgrowth, which can be detected by an organic acids test, um, you want to eradicate that. Next, biofilms can be inflammatory. If you've got a biofilm that's stuck to your intestines, like this diagram here of bad bacteria, that biofilm is chronically inflaming your immune system, and the immune system is going to get angry and cause inflammation all around your body. Next, these things are incredibly difficult to eradicate. It takes us many times, weeks to months, to help people eradicate biofilms and try to transition those bad bacteria, bad biofilms out in order to regrow a good, healthy microbiome. So your microbiome is found inside your bowels, and if you don't, if you have too many bad biofilms, then you can't grow good, healthy bacteria. Without good, healthy bacteria, you naturally inflame. So in order to grow a healthy microbiome, you have to weed the garden. So that, that's for frequently the metaphor we use. If you want to grow a garden with lots of vegetables and fruits and whatever else you want, then you have to have good soil. Well, how do you have good soil? You eat good food. You support that microbiome. And then if you have overgrowth of weeds, you've got to pull out those weeds. There's no way to just go spraying Roundup into your, your garden without messing up the fruits and vegetables. So you have to weed out the bad guys um, in order to grow healthy fruits and vegetables. Same thing for your microbiome. You've got to get rid of the bad guys in order for the good guys to grow. So that's where probiotics come in. 
How do I know if I have biofilms? So if you have any kind of gut symptoms, chronic inflammation, autoimmunity, you can pretty much assume that you have a biofilm. Currently at this point in medicine, we don't have a really good way to detect biofilms. There's no good test to prove that you have biofilms. We need more knowledge and more data in this area in order to determine it. But basically, we decide you have biofilms from a clinical perspective. So if you have really difficult symptoms to reverse, really difficult gut to improve, you've been on a healthy diet and your numbers still aren't improving, your inflammatory markers like CRP are just being stubbornly high and not coming down with the usual treatments or dietary changes, then you pretty much know you have biofilms. It's my thought that anyone with a chronic illness most likely already has a biofilm and we will treat them as such. Okay. So gut symptoms, any kind of gut symptom means you have um, biofilms. So whether it's heartburn, reflux, um, indigestion, bloating, um, poorly digested food in your stool, um, constipation, diarrhea, any of those is usually suggesting that you have a microbial microbiome disruption and frequently biofilms. And then of course, if you have any dental disease, chronic plaque, or if the dentist is asking you to come in more often for your cleanings, say every three months instead of every six months, or if you need a deep cleaning, that can mean that you've got some serious biofilm issues in your teeth, which, which most likely means that you have biofilm issues in your bowels. It makes sense to think that you're constantly swallowing saliva. So if you have biofilm issues in your mouth, you're swallowing those biofilm bacteria and they are setting up biofilms in your intestines as well. So how do I test for biofilms? The, the, there's no good way, as I said a second ago, but we can do stool testing to find out what bacteria, fungus may be overgrowing in your bowels. Is there inflammation? Is there food sensitivities? Um, are you breaking down your food appropriately? All of those are kind of hints towards whether you have a biofilm or not. Our, uh, another more sensitive test is called an organic acids test, and that's just a, a urine test. It's a frozen urine. And what that tells us is it tells us the active metabolites from these bad bacteria and fungi. And these, these fungus may um, create biofilms. The bacteria may create biofilms. So when we see them overgrowing, we know what we're treating and we can get a little more specific with the patient. And we can also generally tell them the severity of their illness, how much that stuff is overgrowing. And that can give us an idea of how high of a dose we need to go on or how long of a treatment we need to try. Um, so testing for biofilms isn't an exact science right now, but we're getting better and better at it. The next and most important topic is how do I disrupt these biofilms? And once again, just like the testing, we've got a lot to learn in the biofilm eradication department, but we're making considerable progress and all the functional medicine clinics are kind of trying different things and we all share our knowledge. And so the, the protocols and treatment regimens we've come up with have been from our own clinical testing of supplements and products as far as what works best for our patients. We're constantly improving and evolving our protocols to make them more effective um, to make them more efficient, meaning that we can go higher dose for a shorter amount of times, get people better quicker, um, and then also limit the, the side effects or the die-off that happens with eradicating the biofilms, which I'll get to in a second. So at the time of this video, this is our current protocol, but if, as this video ages, we, we, we will most likely have a different protocol by that point. So the way to eradicate biofilms is you must start disrupting the bacteria first. So commonly we use a product called biocidin. It's a liquid. And this biocidin liquid, here I've got a, a bottle of it. So this biocidin liquid is a combination herb. It's almost like an essential oil of sorts. It's got all kinds of things in it. The most, con the most um, well-known stuff is going to be berberine, black walnut, grapeseed extract, tea tree oil, oregano oil, and it's got a few other things in there. But this has been a, this has been a fantastic little combination of stuff stuff to work for almost any and all of our patients. So I believe that um, berberine, black walnut, each one of these things you'll read about are great antimicrobials. They kill bacteria or they kill fungus or they kill both. But taking just one of those products doesn't seem to work so well. So we believe that the microbiome is so diverse and the bad bacteria, bad fungi can be so diverse that you need a diverse product in order to kill and disrupt anything and everything in there. During this process, you will be killing good guys as well because you can't select the bad guys. You will select, you will kill both bad and good guys. So it is very important to be supporting the good guys while you're disrupting these biofilms and bacteria and fungus. The way you support those good guys is with plenty of prebiotics. Everyone's always talking about probiotics, but we cannot forget about prebiotics. Prebiotics are the food that the good bacteria survive off of. So fiber is the number one prebiotic, and basically every prebiotic is a type of fiber of some sort. 
Our favorite prebiotic is a product called Ultra GI. It's made by Metagenics, and it's got a specific fiber that only turns into a, um, a, a, a beneficial bacteria food. So it's called 2-fucosolactose, and this 2-fucosolactose only feeds acetate-producing bacteria, and those are known to kill off bad bacteria and fungi. But any fiber will work, just you need plenty of it is the only, the only issue. Um, you can, of course, get more fiber from fruits and vegetables, but you can also supplement with any kind of product. I wouldn't be too specific in that department. So first of all, you got to feed the good guys. you got to kill the bad guys. You'll kill some good guys in the process. And then sometimes for our really difficult patients, for our patients that have really bad fungus overgrowth, we'll actually use prescription antifungal drugs like nystatin, fluconazole, itraconazole, and even amphotericin. And so based on the, the, the level of symptoms or how resistant they are, we'll use these drugs in combination with the biocidin because these biofilms despite the diagram I, I showed a second ago it's not just one bacteria we know it's a complex set of organisms that get together and protect each other so you can't just take antifungals and get better you can't just take antibacterial and get better otherwise we everyone would be cured because we're using tons of antibacterials and antifungals in our environment but people are only getting worse it's important to disrupt all of it and at the same time supporting the good guys one of the other things we frequently like to add to our um, biofilm disruption is something to specifically disrupt the biofilm. So the biofilm is like this slimy, fibrous substance that protects the bacteria and fungus from, from any kind of assault. So you can drink as much biocidin as you want, and it does disrupt biofilms to some degree, but it's got its limitations. So we found that adding other products like digestive enzymes help to break up those um, biofilms, and then EDTA is also a well-known biofilm buster. So the product we use in this situation to add with biocidin is Interphase Plus. Um, and Interphase Plus is, has a few digestive enzymes and EDTA. And the idea here is, I like to think of it as trying to demolish a brick wall. If you want to get rid of a brick wall, of course you can take a sledgehammer to it, but you can't take a sledgehammer to your bowels. So the way you would do it if you wanted to do it with pills is you want to dissolve the martyr between the bricks. This martyr is holding those bricks together. So the digestive enzymes in the Interphase Plus is designed to soften that martyr so that the brick wall comes crumbling down. Meanwhile, the EDTA, which chelates heavy metals and magnesium and iron and all the other metals out there, that bacteria and fungus is using the metals in your food to build a wall. So this EDTA in the uh, Interphase Plus is plucking bricks out of the wall that the fungus and bacteria used is like iron and magnesium and, and other me, uh, metals and minerals it uses to, to create those walls. And so by pulling bricks out, that brick wall gets even weaker and then that biofilm can get disrupted, that brick wall can come down. But the interphase by itself isn't as good without the addition of antifungals and biocidin because once you tear up that biofilm, you actually have to get the products inside to kill the organisms. Otherwise, those organisms are just going to create more biofilms as soon as you stop the product. So we use all of this stuff in combination. One of the other things we frequently use is something called Olivirex. Olivirex is a uh, olive leaf extract and it is designed to boost the immune system. It's also known as a bacteria and fungus disruptor. But the primary reason we believe it's working is because it's boosting the immune system inside of the bowels and you're using, you're harnessing your immune system to help disrupt that biofilm, to go in there and say, hey, this stuff doesn't need to be here. Let's disrupt it. Let's kill it. Let's get it out of here. Okay. So we've talked about prebiotics, we've talked about um, killing the bacteria and fungus, we've talked about prescriptions and the biofilm buster interphase plus, but we can't forget about the probiotics. So you can be disrupting all these bad guys, all this biofilm, but you have to be replacing the good guys. So you wanna use plenty of probiotics. I usually recommend around 50 billion probiotics. And to keep things simple, you want a multi-strain probiotic, and it might require two or three different versions in order to get to 50 billion in multiple strains. We typically in our practice use two different probiotics because that seems to work the best for us. The two we use are Therabiotic Complete. You've probably seen it in some of my other videos. It's made by Claire Labs. And then that's just a broad spectrum, 25, 30 billion um, probiotics. And then we like Ultrafluor Spectrum from Metagenics. This is also more probiotics, but it also has Saccharomyces boulardii. 
I've mentioned this in my other videos, Saccharomyces boulardii likes to kill other yeast and fungus, so you hire it as a mercenary probiotic and it kills those guys and it can disrupt biofilms by itself. Um, but it doesn't really grow in the human intestinal tract, so it, it can't colonize and you can't get fungus overgrowth from Saccharomyces boulardii. It is considered a beneficial fungus. So you must be replacing the good guys while you're trying to kill the bad guys because ultimately you're killing some good guys as well. One of the most important things I want to tell you about doing all this regimen stuff is something called a Herxheimer reaction. Many of you have probably already heard about a Herxheimer reaction. A Herxheimer reaction was described by Dr. Herxheimer. And the idea is that when you're killing off bad bacteria and fungus or even good bacteria, you get you start absorbing those intestinal or those uh, microbial guts, basically. And those microbial guts are inflammatory to humans. There's a product, there's a, there's a lipopolysaccharide inside of certain bacteria, and that lipopolysaccharide is inflammatory to humans. It's inside of the bacteria. So when you start killing these bacteria, that lipopolysaccharide gets released and then you feel really bad. You feel sick. You can feel flu-like. The most common symptoms we see are fatigue and brain fog, but we frequently get people with rashes, acne, um, digestive disturbances, bloating, gas, diarrhea, all that stuff. And while that is a good thing that you're having that reaction because it means you're disrupting the, the microbiome, disrupting the bad guys, hopefully, you're also suffering from side effects and symptoms. So we usually um, give people two other products to help manage those side effects and, and, and die off or Herxheimer reaction in order to help them move through the protocol faster. The faster you can kill off those guys and feel less worse, um, the, the better for you. So the two products we frequently use is Biotonic, another product from uh, Biobotanicals Research. Biotonic is designed to speed up the liver detox process so it helps get rid of um, the, the bacterial and fungus toxins that you're absorbing. It just helps you clear it faster to get it out of your system. The second thing we like to use, and I don't have it on this table, I apologize, is GI Detox. GI Detox is um, made by Biobotanicals Research, but it's basically a combination of clay, charcoal, some other stuff, and the the idea is that as you're killing those bacteria and fungus inside your bowels, that clay and charcoal is binding it up so that you don't absorb it. And if you don't absorb it, then you don't feel so bad. You just kind of poop it out. The downsides to clay and charcoal is that it can constipate you. And so if you're constipated, that's not helping you. You must get the stool out. If you're killing these guys, you have to eradicate them and you ultimately have to take the trash out every day. So if you're not pooping every day, it's very important to make sure you're adding in aloe vera, magnesium, whatever, enemas, uh, mag citrate, whatever it is you need in order to actually move your bowels every day. The other problem with activated charcoal and clay is that it can bind up your nutrients. So we're not a big fan of using it long term. So it can bind up the, the food that you eat, the supplements that you take. So in general, when you're taking GI detox, you don't want to take it anywhere around your food or supplements. It doesn't necessarily make your food or supplements dangerous. It just makes them less effective and you're basically just not might as well not take the supplements if you're going to do that. So that's all I want to talk about as far as biofilms. There's a lot more that we're going to find out. I will probably end up making subsequent videos as our protocols change, as we learn more in medicine. But if you are someone that is struggling to improve, reverse your inflammation, um, or you're stuck on this strict diet and you can only eat a certain amount of foods, and if you deviate from that plan at all, you get significantly worse, you have a biofilm problem. You must disrupt that biofilm by whatever means is possible in order to regrow a healthy microbiome. So hopefully this helps. I will put um, the, the products and things in the, the, the description of the video so that you don't have to write everything down. So um, feel free to leave a comment or a question and I'll do my best to answer it.